The, the uh, taxpayer-funded National Endowment for the Arts recently conducted a conference call for dozens of artists and filmmakers. But our next guest says the agenda on that call seemed a lot more political than artistic. He says the NEA and the White House and White House officials on the call encouraged the artistic community to use their work to promote the Obama team's agenda on issues like health care reform. And joining us now is the filmmaker and art consultant, Patrick Kurilsch. Patrick, thanks for joining us. You were on this call. Did the uh, Obama officials and the NEA people, did they make a direct pitch, hey, get behind Obama's uh, health care reform plan and let's spend some taxpayer money promoting it? Uh, hello, Stuart. Um, they had us talk about, they, they, had, they encouraged us to talk about specific issues, those being health care and energy and the environment. Those were the top two on the list. Uh, th that's what they so, wanted you to um, talk about you know, in they, they, public, right? And well, to go out and skew, skew your work towards they, that? They requested and encouraged us to create art and art mu and music and images uh, in, to, in service of those issues. Why do you object to so, that? So, I mean, well, it, the National Endowment for the Arts was made to promote the arts. It's called the National Endowment for the Arts, not to use the arts to push issues. And it's, uh, it felt to me when I first got the invitation as uh, somewhat, to, somewhat of an overreach for the National Endowment for the Arts. So that's why I called into the conference call. These people, everybody that was on the conference call, were told, we were also told that everybody on the conference call were people that supported the Obama uh, campaign leading up to the presidency. And we were told that we knew how to shape the people's minds, that we uh, knew how to make a stink like no other community, and we were encouraged to do so. So, you know, at the end of this conference call, it, it, it was very obvious to me what they were in, intending to do. Whether they're successful at doing it or not is another, is another case, but I think that's beside the point. That's not what the National Endowment for the Arts was, is, was made for and, and why it was uh, brought into, uh, in, 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 into existence. Well, it, you, from what you heard, it sounds an awful lot like taxpayer money was... Tr they tried to use taxpayer money to support a specific political position by the Obama team. That's what it sounds like. Well, well, they are the largest funder of the arts in the United States. And they have on this conference call the uh, people that they fund. And in addition to that, these are people that were uh, in hand-picked. They said we were selected for a reason. And they are hand-picked, basically, uh, because they were involved in the Obama uh, uh, campaign. I mean, they, they used the Hope poster and, and the Will I Am's Yes We Can video as uh, perfect examples of how this community and how this group uh, helped elect this man to, uh, to office. So, I mean, it, you know, when you have this hand-picked uh, group and you're telling them to speak to certain issues, what do you think they're going to speak to? Yeah. I mean, it sounds pretty obvious to me. But I wouldn't have expected to see many conservatives uh, on any kind of call, even if they hadn't picked, hand-picked liberals and people, uh, Obama supporters, I, you know, the, the, as an outsider to the arts, I don't expect to see many conservatives or people who disagree with the Obama t team emerging from the artistic community. Am I, am I right on that one? Well, I, I, and that's not what I've been getting from the, the article that I wrote on Big Hollywood. Uh, I've been getting a lot of support in regards to the, the position that I took that that is not what the National Endowment for the Arts was being used for. Hmm. Um, there was close to 100 people on the phone call. You would think just statistically that somebody like me uh, would be on the phone call that wouldn't necessarily agree with it. And I'm sure that there was others on the phone call that, that didn't uh, think that, that it was kosher. Now, now I, I must say, they didn't blatantly say, go out and, um, you know, use, uh, you know, support our policies. But there was even times where they, um, they questioned the legality of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And they asked us to be patient um, to, uh, so that they could learn the language to speak to us. Uh, safely. So, I mean, uh, there's definitely something here. And, you know, Mr. Landisman, uh, when he, his, in his first public address to the, to, the, to the people, he said something along the lines of uh, the National Endowment for the Arts. He was looking forward to a new conversation for the arts. And, and, you know, after this meeting, I, you know, after, after this meeting, I say the same thing. I say, is, uh, I'm looking forward to a new conversation as well, and it's it, whether the National Endowment for the Arts should or should not exist. I mean, this is not what this uh, agency was created for. Good point. Patrick Karolish, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you.